Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Tuesday, May 30th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And the, and but and I'm Nathan Wood. <laughs> God damn, I don't even have the thing out. Hold on, guys. Shit. Fuck you me. You don't even All have right. the thing out? Fuck you? What? Yeah. Is that, is All right, that... uh, take, take two. <laughs> okay. And I'm Nathan motherfucking Wood. Please remember, everyone, that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. That's how we keep the show funded and going. If you are new to the show, due to our new live listening time, we go live on Facebook, 6 p.m. Alaska time. That's 7 p.m. if you're on the West Coast, 10 p.m. if you're on the East. Welcome very much. We are a four-day-a-week podcast. We Our episodes are about 45 minutes to an hour long, and we just give you a bunch of news from the last 24 hours straight off of Reddit because there's not a better source. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So, Nathan, how are you today? I, I mean, it's been a day. It's a long day. Yeah? That's why I'm hitting the gin and tonic. Like you do on a Tuesday? Well, like I do anytime I have gin and tonic, really. On, on a Tuesday? Dude, if there's gin in front of me, I don't care if it's fucking... If I'm at work and someone puts a gin and tea in front of me, I'm sorry, but I'm working drunk. <laughs> Wait, a gin and tea? A gin and tonic. Oh, okay. A G and T. Oh, okay. My brain... Though this isn't tonic, this is Sprite. My brain pictured you pouring gin into, like, I don't mean, like, like, iced tea. No, and I have to use a silly straw every time. There... What if you don't have one? Oh, then I'm just gonna have to be a man and get it all over my beard. Oh, which okay. is getting kind of long, guys. Yeah. If you want, if you want to get rid of Nathan's beard, uh, get our Patreon up to one fifty a month, and he'll shave that thing off. I'll shave it off on camera, while Michael's rapping. Ugh! Can you shave that fast? <laughs> yeah. Brrr, just ch glaring it off. You're gonna get more than six lines. We'll write something good. Oh shit! Dude, it's gonna be almost a feature track. Oh god, no! It will. You'll be bigger than Big Sean. It ain't featuring anything but my horrible ass singing. Oh, God, and that horrible ass song of yours. Yeah, it's not even it's out a yet. a Schwann song. Yep, yep, it'll be a Schwann song. Because after that, uh, everyone is going to leave, and I will no longer be heard of forever. What are you talking about? It's going to be more downloaded than Liar by for about <laughs> Theresa May. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see that happening. I, I do. Oh, I'm glad. You have a lot more... Co you need to... Ha have as much confidence in yourself as you have in me. No, because I've learned never to have confidence in yourself. Why? Because you should believe in the me that believes in you. Oh. Your drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens. It, it, it really? Come on, Shimon! I I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Anyway. It's Gurren Logan. Five. Number five. Hey, that's a complete ten. anime you haven't watched. Which one? Gurren Logan. Uh, you're right. I have not seen Gurren Logan. Shit's boss. You should. It's really good. Anywho. Ten. Russians discussed potentially derogatory information about Trump and associates during campaign. Uh, wait. Jared Kushner once allegedly admitted that Donald Trump lies to his base because he thinks they're stupid. These are not topics we're discussing. Okay. They're, they're submitted by other people. Yep, and, and there's a reason that I left those out. The reason being is that I curate the news that we bring to you guys because both of these topics were extremely heavily upvoted by the internet. But... I want you to listen to what those are. Russians may have discussed potentially derogatory information about Trump. It says that they discussed potentially derogatory. It doesn't the say may have. In the article, it's a may. Okay. And then Jared Kushner once allegedly admitted that Donald Trump lies because he thinks his, his base is stupid. Sure. Here's the problem with this this type of news. I hate it. I hate it so much, and it shouldn't be news. There's there, there's no reason that this kind of shit should be being spare, spread around. And, it, like, trust me, I don't like Trump. I would love to just share bad shit about Trump. But the thing is, is that there is actually no news here. This is, like, the, the one about Russia, a source that cannot be named, may have described about derogatory information that Russians might have talked about. So there, what what they're doing, right, is they're reporting leads that they have. They're not actually reporting things that they've found. It's not reportable. There's nothing here. This is useless. There's nothing here at all. It's garbage. It's and a lead, Michael. For what? 
Nath, to find out if they actually did those things. Nath, uh, sources say that Nathan Wood may have allegedly sucked goat penis. Well, that's a lead. Okay. <laughs> you have this lead. Now follow that lead and report the news. Okay. I will tell you right now from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the one that had goat penis? It did allegedly have a goat penis in it. However, it has not had a goat penis. <laughs> Schlong song. But see, the thing is, if it's a lead, report it once it's no longer a lead. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my headphones to work. Keep talking. Okay. I'm sorry. I know your headphones sh suck ass. Anyway, but basically, like, this isn't a story yet. This is a potential story. I understand that it's a lead and it could lead to something important based on what information yeah, yeah. that they have, but it's it's not a story right now. If it's just a lead, wait until it's actually a story because right. the sources themselves say that it could be an overstatement of their belief of influence. That they sure. could have exaggerated it or even made it up. Literally they said that. That's the source that that said this information might be exaggerated or made up. Yes. This is not news. No, but it is a lead. There is something there. Even if it's just a rumor. A rumor is something. Well, you know what? Donald Trump might have been born in India. Why are you reporting leads when you're just talking about how you didn't like reporting leads? It, it's a now joke. Now we have to actually it, report. It's now a fucking joke, out, Nathan. We have to figure out if he actually was born in India and report whether or not he has or not. I'm moving on now. <laughs> oh my god, you're just gonna leave this as an open-ended lead? Yep, total cliffhanger. Wonder Woman, Lebanon calls for Stop ban- Stop leading me on! <laughs> it's a pun! Wonder Woman, Lebanon calls for ban a film over Israeli lead Gal Gadot. This was submitted by Pikachu Squarepants to our movies. So, first off, Israel and, and in Lebanon are at war, have been for some time, a couple, few years now, right? With that, though, the thing to add to that is that Lebanon has a ban on a bunch of Israeli things. Israeli people aren't allowed in the country. You're not allowed to also associate with anyone from Palestine. And they're not allowed to share media or anything like that that is from Israel. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they couldn't have Gal Gadot films presented. Because she is from Israel, but this is not Israel media. This is Israeli media. This is American media. But there are people that are calling for a ban of the new Wonder Woman film because it solely focuses on Gal Gadot, who is from Israel, as well. Sorry, excuse me. As well as has advocated for Israeli's side in the conflict, which I mean makes sense. It's her homeland. You know, you'd want the people that you come from most of the time, at least, to win. So I mean, she's you know sent her love and her support and stuff like that for the Israeli people, and that upsets Lebanon to the point that they're going to try to ban the film Wonder Woman. Hmm. Hmm. Here's the interesting it, thing, it though. Ma it makes me wonder what how they feel about the uh, the prequels to Star Wars. Well, and here's the other thing is like because Natalie Portman is totally from Israel. Well, and like Fast and the Furious and Batman vs Superman, she's in both of those, and neither of those were banned. Right. Well, this is a, a movie that she's the lead in. So, Not that it makes it any better. I'm just saying that she's going to be on camera way more often than if she was a... a um, basically a cameo. A, or a, a, a leading. Sup Not a leading. Oh, supporting. Fuck, what they called? Supporting. Supporting. English. Take three. Well, and... Action. Here's the thing. It is like... Until I read this, and I mean, I'm, you know, stupid fucking Michael here, so there's a lot of times that I don't know things, but I didn't know that she was from Israel, because I don't care. Wow. Why wow? Because, if, I mean, sure. To, to, to you, she's probably just like a, a secondary, like, uh, a secondary kind of actor, actress. Where you're like, oh, cool, they're in this movie, I'll probably enjoy it, but you're not going to actively seek her movies out. Even the people that I do seek their movies out, I could not tell you where they're from. See, like, my favorite actor, Christian Bale, I don't know where he's from. I think he's English, maybe, don't actually know. I don't know. I feel like it's, it's almost like um, how people get so fanatic about uh, baseball players and, and other kinds of sports players, where... After you, you found your favorites, you have to learn literally everything about them, including their blood type. See, I care more about 
who they are as people and what they do as people and like in terms of like sports players or actors the performance they deliver as people not necessarily where they come from i i mean i can understand that but like if i'm enjoying somebody i want to learn more about them oh are you enjoying somebody nathan oh dude i enjoy a lot of people all right <laughs> betty white fantastic woman natalie dormer fantastic woman you got any men uh, in that list or are you just jason gonna... momoa fantastic man Jason Statham, Chris Pratt, Chris Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth. See, again, I could not tell you where any of those people are from. Any of them. Man. I don't, like, and so for me, like, I wouldn't, like, even if we were at war with, like, I don't, uh, who cares, anybody, and, like, someone from that country was in America making American movies, I don't think I would care. Uh, they're trying to, you know, work, do an honest job. Unless they're, they're they're making movies spreading propaganda. Well, that's entirely different. Like, then the message of the movie is something that I am against. But I don't feel like... What one... if it's, like, a sneakily subconscious message? Then I might not notice. <laughs> like, you know, you might just go... Or you think you won't notice, but subconsciously you do, and then you start having dreams about those subconscious things? Maybe? Sure. Why not? And suddenly you're having dreams that, you know, you're... Doing something crazy, like, I, fuck, I don't know, blowing people up. Sure, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Either Isn't that way. like the catcher in the rye? I, I don't know. Should probably shoot John Lennon. Why? Because I read the catcher in the rye. Oh, okay. Eight. No one came to this eight-year-old birthday party, so Hearst police got involved. Whoa. They, they arrested everyone in town. False. This was submitted by Hypoboxer to our uplifting news. So, eight-year-old little boy having a birthday party. They send out a bunch of invites. Nobody showed up. Um, the parents, in a panic about, like, this little eight-year-old boy is going to have to deal with the, the fact that none of his friends came to his birthday party. And that could be very damaging to an eight-year-old psyche. And so, they sent out a message to the neighborhood. And no one responded to the neighborhood, like, little Facebook group. So, the parents, like, in a panic, called the police. And were like, hey, could you please potentially send an officer down to, you know say hi and like his my, our, our eight-year-old son really you know looks up to police officers and he'd love to see one the entire station came everyone that was on shift showed up to this th this person's house as well as several firefighters to celebrate this little boy's birthday with him that's cool isn't it though isn't it i i think that's that's fucking absolutely amazing that's so fucking oh that makes my heart palpitate in just the right ways Palpatine. The ways that make me the ways that make me feel like I might be not dead on the inside. Well, that alcohol is keeping you alive right now, so it's fine. No, it's not. It's just preserving my body. Well, Don't I... you know anything about science? Mm, depends on the science, <laughs> dude. I'm not here. I'm not a scientist. I, I'm a dork that pushes paper for the state and thinks he knows what he's doing when he talks into a microphone. Oh, dude, stop being me. Right? I know. It sucks. Either way, though, eventually some of the people around the town did show up because I, the, the parents were acting pretty hastily. Like, when no one responded to the comment, the uh, post in their Facebook group, like, in 10 minutes is when they were already heading to the police station. So, I mean, within time, some people started to show up, bringing their kids, making new friends, all that stuff. So, the 8-year-old's birthday party was saved. Nice. Sorry, I'm, re I'm responding to people saying hey in the comments. No, that's amazing. I, I, um, I almost feel like there should be a a service set up where if no one's RSVP to your party or very little people, you can hire people to come to your party for you. Mm -hmm. But at like a volunteer rate, like I would totally volunteer just to go to some kid's birthday or I would, even if the kid's a little shit with snot dripping out of their mouth or out of their nose, out of their mouth even, which is absolutely terrible, racist little kid, racist parents, everything, I'd still probably go. Cause Mostly it's because kid. it's a little kid. You want to you want to be positive about it, and on top of that, there's probably tons of free food. Sure. And they never said anything about going sober. I don't know why that commented as the group. I changed it to my face, and it it didn't work. Sucks to suck. I guess so. All kinds of lame. Whatever. Anywho, let's move on with our life and our show, shall we? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. Seven. Wikipedia's switch to HTTPS has successfully fought government censorship. This was submitted by Mepper to Our World News. So, basically, what it was is that 
Wikipedia was having a problem with countries censoring them. Right. Uh, there, there's uh, there's been countries that threw up their own Wikipedia pages. Well, and or changed them and altered them. And there were some countries, Turkey, China, that had banned Wikipedia altogether. Some places, like even in the UK, specific German rock bands were being banned from their Wikipedia pages being accessed. And Wikipedia is supposed to be this congregation of information on the internet. And they're like, hey, not cool. So they switched from HTTP to HTTPS. Now, what HTTP is, is Hypertext Translation Protocol. Transfer Protocol, sorry. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And it's basically the way that the internet sends you information to your browser and your browser says this is what I would like to see. The S stands for secure and what that means is when your browser goes, I would like to go here, the website goes, oh, we are a secure website. Here is an encryption key that will only work for you for the time that you are here right now. And your browser goes, cool, and de-encrypts it and re-encrypts it. And so everything transferred between you and that website while you are there is encrypted as long as it's through an HTTPS connection. So like Facebook. Yeah. Lots of things are switching to HTTPS, but what this means is that anyone monitoring you, like your ISP, anything like that, that's looking at what you're doing, they can see that you connected to a website. They can be like, oh, you connected to Facebook, you connected to Wikipedia. Pornhub. You connected to Pornhub, but they cannot Whoa, see- Whoa, who says I use that? You, but they what? can't- What? They can't see- No, I covered my mouth. You couldn't see it. <laughs> they can't see anything past that. They can't tell like what- like my mouth. They can't tell what pages you were going to, anything like that. They can only see that you connected to it. So what this does is this forces country to choose an all or nothing plan. Because if something is blocked via HTTP, if you can do an HTTPS connection, it'll still make it through. So they either have to block the website entirely or allow all of it. You can't just block specific pages. And originally people were concerned, like, that will just mean that more people will ban Wikipedia. Well, they switched to HTTPS in 2015, and since then they've had a lot of success in not being blocked anymore. Sorry, to all the people who are watching, keep seeing me take my glasses off and try and scratch something off of it. I kept thinking there was something on it, but it was the, um, the light coming from my window. Um, it's been bothering me the entire time. Uh, no, um, so, so, like, what are, what are they planning on doing then? Well, they've already done it, because they did it back at two years ago, but what this shows is that if you want to try to fight government internet censorship, just switching your website to HTTPS is very successful in combating that. Yeah! Let's make our website HTTP. I, I, I think it already is. H T N M N E S. I I believe it already is. Good. Be Next. Because we're hosted. Move forward with phase two. We're hosted through Squarespace, so. X. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Here's mm -hmm. something that you can get uh, all kinds of excited about, Nathan. Are you ready? Mm -mm. No. Are you ready now? Nope, we're ending the show. Oh, well, fuck. Six. Animaniacs reboot being developed by Steven Spielberg, Amblin TV, and Warner Brothers. Oh, God, yes! <laughs> this is submitted by Lizlet to our television. Yep, and so Animaniacs, if you, I hope most people have heard of them, it was a TV show back oh, in the so early good. 1990s. It had 99 episodes that ran from 93 to 95 on Fox Kids before moving to Kids WB from 95 to 98. Um, this is also a lot of places where like spinoffs like Pinky, Pinky and the Brain come from. And I mean, we haven't heard anything from it in the last, what, tw 19 years? Nope, 21 years. I can do math. Yeah, no, two decades, two decades. And so they're looking at rebooting it. That's exciting because they like they were rebooting the um the fucking Ducktales. Yep. Did you see who they have as a cast for Ducktales? Nope. Oh my fucking god. The new one is fucking going to be so goddamn lit. They had this uh um uh YouTube uh video where it had all of the people who are going to voice the certain people um singing the the old original DuckTales intro, right? Mm -hmm. So among them, you have Dan David Tennant as Scrooge motherfucking McDuck. Okay. Right? You got Bobby Moynihan as Louie. You got Ben Schwartz as Dewey. And you got Danny Pudi as, as Huey. 
So there isn't a home yet for the reboot. They're just going to start working on it, but they don't know where it's going to air. They don't know if it's going to air on Boomerang, on Netflix, or on TV itself. So Dude. It, we don't know yet, but we know that they are working the on it. I don't care where the fuck it airs. As long as it fucking airs, they can stream it on the internet like they did with the interview, all, all they fucking love. And I'd, just, I'd eat that shit up. And, well, and it's Steven Spielberg that's going to be developing it again, which is awesome. Right. Oh, God, I fucking absolutely loved uh fucking animaniacs as and you know all of those other cartoons i watched as a kid ducktales i loved i fucking i loved um gargoyles that's what they need to bring back oh my god if they brought back gargoyles or did a live action gargoyles movie oh god i'm gonna name need to like calm the spire inside of me down with alcohol five almost tr Half of Trump's Twitter followers appear to be fake. Oh, this was submitted by Happy Antonin Scalia to our politics. Hey, Nathan. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you can buy Twitter followers, by the way. Um, if you didn't know, you can, for about four hundred dollars, you can buy yourself a million Twitter followers. Now, most of them are fake, and there are a lot of ways to check to see if someone has a lot of fake Twitter followers because a lot of them will be eggs with no tweets, no picture, no nothing, and will I mean, like half of my Instagram people, except they do have pictures, and it's mostly like nudes, half naked women that are like, "Quick, look at this, half? and give me money." That's half naked that's very liberal of you whatever anyway so you can check by just looking at the like the, essentially the signs for what is a very large amount of fake accounts there is already a service that does this it is called twitter audit and um, conducting a audit on trump's twitter which currently is sitting around 31 million followers around 15 million of them are fake damn that's fucking hilarious and, like, by comparison, if you want, like, and you could buy them real easy. And it's a way to boost popularity because people are like, oh, they got a lot of followers follow. So, for comparison, if you would like to know, first off, the top three um, Twitter accounts are Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, and Barack Obama. Barack Obama How is currently sitting with 89 million followers. How many of them are fake? 20%. Okay. That's a pretty decent amount. It's true. Not half, though. No. And the, the other thing to remember with, like, Twitter followers or s subscribers on YouTube or anything like that is that it is never a very accurate representation of how many active people are following them. Like, when you see someone with, like, 15 million followers on YouTube, a, a solid, like, 9 million of those are probably inactive accounts that no one visits or uses anymore. It's why someone can have, you know, like, I mean, with Trump, you'll see, he has 31 million followers, but will normally have, like, 20,000 retweets, which is considerable, but the numbers aren't equivalent. Like, you, if, if you had 31 million active followers and you sent out a tweet, you would realistically see, like, at 500,000 retweets. But that the, the way the math doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Even people, like, making fun of him should, like, they're retweeting his stuff a lot of the time. Right, he's got, a, like, and that, that contributes a lot to his retweets of people that are retweeting it to put a quote on of, like, look how stupid this is, her to der. So, or like, hey, let's check out these actual facts. So, this isn't anything new, because almost every account, especially popular one, has some level of fake accounts. There's tons of bot accounts that you don't even pay for. They follow you to con to conduct research. Like, I mean, Twitter is, you, you can just look at Twitter, and they just go pull all the information of the people we follow. And so, you're going to get bots on any social media that has open follow. Like we might end up getting bots that follow the Facebook group. You will. I, I think we. I think we already do. Maybe. And there will be bots that comment on YouTube videos, bots that subscribe on YouTube, bots that follow you on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you go. But all right. So like, there's this. There's like. So yeah, it's bad because these bots are propagating things that maybe shouldn't be propagated, right? But at the same time, they're actually propagating things. A lot of the times, people will just go to a YouTube video or go and, and, and go to a page that they really enjoy and instead of like and sharing it, um, which if you notice, like any meme that I enjoy, I like and share it. Yeah. I, um, I do too, unless you posted it. And even then I sometimes still do. Right. And, and, but that's because like, I feel that 
sure it may not be the original poster, but people need to, people may not need to see it. People may want to see it, and it's not going to to reach everyone if no one shares it. So bots are are also a, a like a, a double edged sword because like yes, you could bury this person who may not be funny into the complete ground if there's no more bots, but you also get those diamonds that are completely fucking hilarious that no one at all would see if it weren't for bots. Right. The main criticism comes from because people with popular accounts constantly do these audits, right? Not not like nonstop, but people that sometimes get curious and audit an account, and because you literally just type the account name into this service and it goes, "Here's the information for you." In April of 2016, an audit was conducted into Trump's account. That was, you know, when he was first beginning to gain traction as a serious candidate for, you know, the position of POTUS. And at that time, he had 7.58 million followers. So seven and a half million. And at the time, 8% were fake. Sure. Of that 7.5 million, 8% were fake. An additional audit was done in January of this year when he had 20 million followers. And at that point, um, 32% were fake. So he had gained, what is that math? Four, 13 million followers right around. But mm -hmm. of that 13 million followers, around 24% of which, so one in four was a fake account. And now he's sitting at 31 million, and half of his followers are fake. Like, I, I understand that. But, like, let's be real. There are some people who program these bots. Oh, no, it's, just it's true. Like and add people indiscriminately. Well, and also with They Trump, may have a starting point, and then from there go, everyone on their friends list, and then everyone on their friends list, sure. and then everyone on their friends list. Well, and with Trump, he, of course, would have a very large influx of bots following him because every like he's such an easy talking point to get free clicks and views on. Oh, easily. I mean, that's how we got half of the people who are in our chat room. Here. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I mean, the other half are, you know, my mom and, and, you know, my family, but that's beyond the point. Sure. Either way, people really seem to care that half of his followers are fake. I, four. Your Twitter following I mean, is I, that I, important. I feel like if you sat there and thought about it for a second, it's not surprising, and it's not something that really should matter, because, you know, sure, half of his his followers are fake, but, you know, like, bots are fucking everywhere, and that, they're going to be doing that. That said, though, that also means, if that number is correct, that he has almost 16 million actual followers, which is considerable. Like, that's a, that's a, that's a big-ass number. I mean, you are president, so... It's understandable. I mean, before he was president, he had, you know, like 16 million. And well, he was also, you know, super fucking rich and in Home Alone 2. Oh, yeah. No, I understand. Like, I'm not. You know I'm, who I'm, else was in Home Alone 2? Uh, friggin. Uh, what? Crap. What's his name? Tim Curry. Exactly. Tim fucking Curry. Is, is that it? <laughs> Just... Yeah. No, that's that's exactly who I was talking I mean, you could, you could say Macaulay Culkin. Fuck Macaulay Culkin compared to Tim Curry. Uh, I mean, Mr. Weasley and Dr. House were in it. I mean, shit. If you don't like Tim, Cur Tim, if you don't like Tim Curry, you need to get a fucking clue. Really, really. Uh. It's a pun. Four. Elon Musk. Automation will force universal basic income. This was submitted by Mavia to our futurology. I fucking believe it. Well, so quick basis for anyone that isn't on the page. Universal basic income is you will get a check for existing. You will get money because you are alive. That's what Everybody. I'm trying to do here, guys. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, go to patreon.com slash daily internet. Excuse you. One of us works for this. I I would definitely work. I have expressed my interest in working. I want you to fuck off right now. So you need to move in so that you can actually do the work. Cool. So I'll come get your stuff today. No. Oh well. My shit. room is a mess. I need to start cleaning everything. Well, I was supposed to clean it this weekend, remember? And I couldn't fucking do that because I was babysitting, and now I'm drinking gin and nothing but drinking gin Anywho. because I have two giant bottles, and I'm gonna be drunk for days. Anyway, so the idea is <sighs> that everyone will receive a paycheck because eventually, the idea between <laughs> machines and automation is that they will get to a point that they will that. 
do you know, everything. Yeah, they'll do everything, and then what? And he, the the that that's the, these are two separate problems. One that can be addressed sooner, and one that can be addressed later. Because that's when the liberal arts majors really excel. Because then they're like, yeah, we don't have to do anything. Let's just make fucking art. Well, it's not just that though, because if we get to a point where so much of our lives is automated, money becomes useless. Like. There's a reason that there there is no money in Star Trek because they have replicators. Anything that you need in life, you can literally just hit a button and it goes, I will make this out of the atoms that it Which is made is out of. great because you can replicate things with replicators. We can kind of do that with, um, almost do that with 3D printing. We can't 3D print food. I'm, I'm sorry, Africa. We're, we're getting closer, though. And the thing is, is that... Money is based off of supply and demand. If you want something and there's not enough of it, you will offer someone something so that you can have it. And that's the entire idea behind money. But if everything, like, food costs money because it is not infinite. If there was an infinite amount of food, food would be technically worthless because everyone would have it. And it's, in pretty, it's, it's pretty down there when you think about it. Like, sure, sometimes you're up here and you're like, I have to pay a dollar fifty for a fucking apple. But you sit there and think about it and you're like, where the fuck else am I going to get an apple up here? Right, but and a dollar fifty is pretty reasonable compared to like some other things that I'm going to be the, purchasing. The fourteen dollar watermelon, right, or the forty dollar bag of weed. Anyways, damn it, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> but with that though, if we get to a point where machines make anything we want, it's fully automated, and there is no more need for people to do anything, then there's no more need for money. Which means yeah. the economy collapses because the economy is based on money. And how do you fix that? Well, the idea is to keep things valuable and to give everyone money to spend. And that creates a little type of cycle. You have like a fake economy going on? Kind of. You're like, a, you're like trying to force the economy to keep rolling because you give everyone a basic income, a universal basic income, which they then spend, which supports the production that then funds that universal basic income. It really is just like shuffling money around at that point. That's all the economy is in general is just You're like, "Hey, you want $50 a month?" Whatever. Here, have $50 a month. You're going to go spend it on this thing and that's going to come right back to me. The problem is is that universal basic income is a band-aid. Because even with universal basic income, if technology continues to grow and expand, eventually just uh, it, it Automation and robots will lead to Marx's communism. But at that point, like, who cares? Nobody. And, but that's the problem is, then what? Like, what do you do then when you no longer need to work? Nobody in the world needs to work because... Everyone, everyone becomes philosophers. They all just sit around and think. They all sit around and take drugs. They all just do whatever the fuck they want. They want to go jump off of a building... Because they can, because you don't have to spend money anymore, and that machine's gonna save you for doing it. Fucking do it. Well, and the we I all become so fucking hedonistic at that point, well, hedonistic and nihilistic, that it doesn't matter what you do. There Just are fucking do it. There are two realistic possible outcomes. One is Mad Max. The world sure. falls apart and collapses because it just. Like, it just falls apart. The other is Star Trek, is that you create the, the United Federation of Planets and everyone is super happy and ready to go because there's no longer any worry about who's going to eat. How do I get this thing that I want? I have this theory, right? I have this theory that first it's going to be Mad Max because people don't know how to adapt well enough. For a species that is solely living because we can adapt to situations we majority of us don't know how to adapt at all so they're going to adapt poorly there is going to be a mad max scenario people are going to start killing each other maybe maybe it's not going to be as bad as mad max where the the collapse of the economy causes the collapse of culture maybe it's going to be more towards gladiatorial battles because we have nothing to fucking do why not watch people kill each other in real life well, most of the time, gladiators didn't kill each other, but I understand. So at that point, we become Rome again, right? This is where we have to really sit there and, like, think to ourselves, like, let's not be Rome and collapse and fall to Mad Max. Let's excel and become Star Trek. Star, Star Trek. 
Well, I guess also... Right. Kendall's like, people usually kill people for, for resources, though. That's true, but if that, that's because they, they, they sometimes just can't afford those resources. They don't know how other, other ways to get those re resources. If we have infinite resources, yes, far less killing would happen. This is, theoretically, our best scenario is that we don't have to worry about any of these resources. We don't have to worry about any work being put into anything. We just can, can explore and expand our, our own minds, really. Yeah, so there has to be something that tries to keep things stable between what the world is today and what we would like to see that world become tomorrow. Because humans are bad at drastic change. And so if everything became automated, I do believe the world would fall into Mad Max. Or I that, don't. That's why we have to ease the tip in slowly <laughs> into automation. Well, and also the... In, in, in a topic that you enjoy a lot is also the idea of if we develop genetic alterations, editing, whatever you want to call it, that allow us to live a very yeah. long time. Yeah, let's be all turtle people or shark people. Or just edit. Dude, speaking of shark people, guess what I found? What? I'm digging through my boxes of old shitty movies and sitting there at the bottom <clears throat> is actually speaking of no, actually, never mind. This is not a shitty movie. This is an amazing movie. I'm not even going to show it because it's going to be very embarrassing that I thought it was a shitty movie because it was upside down. Um, I found Street Sharks, the complete series. I didn't even know that was a thing. Dude, it's a fucking amazing. Their whole thing is that they call things Jawsome because they're sharks. Well, I'm going to leave this on the screen so that you can see it. You should be able to see it right about now. Someone oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, my God. One particular Joshua Swan dropped this off at my house because he knew that you'd probably see me before you saw him. I love it so much. I can't wait. <laughs> Uh, for those of you at home, I am holding up a VHS cassette of the Microsoft Windows 95 video guide that features Jennifer, An Jennifer Aniston and Jennifer Matthew... Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry from Friends. Yeah. It's a VHS, which is great, because I collect those. I have ass loads of them. So. Yeah. Anywho. Um, that... I was so excited to get drunk again. <laughs> That was Watch fun. it. Three. Russia investigation expands to include Donald Trump's personal attorney. This is submitted by Jackson Arbor to our politics. There, there, you know those... Sometimes, sometimes, the headline is enough and the whole article is just filler. Yeah, it's usually like um, when tons of people die. Michael Cohen... God damn it. Who Michael Cohen, who is President Donald Trump's personal attorney, is now currently under investigation for possible collusion with Russia through the Trump campaign. There, however, it is no direct or hard evidence. They just believe that if they go through him, they will find evidence. Now, he's an attorney, so that's going to be very difficult, especially because he's a very good and very expensive attorney. So, well, yeah, he's Donald Trump's attorney. Yeah. He has to be pretty good. Attorneys like... <laughs> <laughs> Attorneys like him are difficult to go after because they're really good at their jobs. So mm -hmm. he has declined the invitation to provide information and testimony. In Was it an invitation? Originally, yeah. The investigators asked him to provide information and testimony about any contacts he had with people connected to the Russian government. He now, was that under a subpoena? Well, he, let me finish. He declined, saying that the invitation to participate was poorly phrased, overly broad, and not capable of being answered. In which case, right after that, uh, the Senate Select Intelligence Committee voted unanimously to give um, uh, Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina and ranking Democrat Senator Mark Wal Mark Warner of Virginia. Oh, for a second, I thought you were going to say Mark Wahlberg. No. I was really excited. Blanket Marky authority. Mark. To issue subpoenas as they deem necessary. So yes, now he's been subpoenaed to appear. Now there has They're gonna fucking hand him out like goddamn Oprah. You get a subpoena. You get a subpoena. Everyone gets subpoenas. We're gonna get some information out of this somehow. <laughs> oh man. So That's we'll see what comes of that. I mean, he is an attorney and a very good one, so he'll probably fight back from it. He also knows attorney talk. So they could be like, we're going to have a conversation. He's going to be like, well, I'm as good at giving vague as shit answers that don't actually answer any of your questions as a politician. So, haha. -ha. 
Damn. If anyone watches Game of Thrones, he is a Littlefinger type character. Sure? Dude, you would hate Littlefinger. I believe you. Not that I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah, because you haven't watched it yet. Fucking watch it. You would know. I'm so over it, Nathan. Oh my god. Two. Let me tell you how important this character is, though. White House PR chief resigns. Never mind. <laughs> this, this is more important, actually. This is submitted by John Rosling to our news. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he was assigned the position, he was appointed to the position three months ago, and has already submitted his resignation. Now, he gave no details as to why he resigned, or any he, stating personal reasons, but yeah, the communications director, which is the public relations coordinator for the White House, because they're the ones that talk to the fucking press, has resigned. Um, Mike Dubk, Dub? So does that, hold on, does that mean we're gonna get less, less spicy? <laughs> <laughs> well, they've already actually talked about draw rolling back the number of press conferences that are held because Dude, bet. because of the fallout. It, there was even a suggestion that there would only be a press release every two weeks, and it would and the person talking would be Donald Trump himself, which sounds like a terrible idea. Oh man, I can understand two weeks, but like Donald Trump himself. But oh man, I don't know if oh I, I think I'd rather prefer to hear Sean Spicy. He has agreed to stay on until Mr. Trump returns from his trip to the Middle East and Europe. After that, he will be helping with the transition to a new communications director. Once that's concluded, he is gone, um, and we don't have a direct reason why, and he's not providing one. I bet he doesn't want to be he doesn't want his name tagged onto this shit anymore. <laughs> I mean, I can understand. You don't want your name dragged in the dirt. That's why... Hasn't there been someone recently who'd quit for the same reason? I... I don't know. I don't remember. There's, there was a lot of people that walked out over the last... No, no, no. There's a lot of people that were fired. Let's be real. There was a lot of people that quit, too. It's true. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... Of job shifting <laughs> this year, you know? One... Australia plans to ban convicted pedophiles from traveling overseas to protect vulnerable children in Southeast Asia from exploitation. This was submitted by Tragic Donut to Our World News. So Australia puts about 2,500 people on the sexual predator list each year. Damn. Yeah, right? And under this new legislation, which is a world first move, this is not, there is no precedent for this whatsoever. They want to remove the ability, just take away the passports of all pedophiles. I can understand that. Keep them in your, you know, little Australian penal colony. Well, also where you can keep track of them, because what they have found is it would be somewhere around 800 of these people a year would travel to areas around Southeast Asia, and in those areas, they would go to, like, children's sex rings. Yeah, because it's actually kind of fairly common, and surprisingly. Like, they had already implemented, like, harsh punishments for it. Like, if you get found out that you got tra you travel to another country to do these unspeakable acts, you'd be thrown in jail for 25 years. Completely understandable. But mm -hmm. it wasn't enough of a deterrent, and it was too hard to prosecute. So instead, they're like, you're just not allowed to leave. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty okay with this. So, right now, the register... We have enough pet pedophiles around the world as is. We don't need them moving around. The register currently contains around 20,000 people in Australia. Jesus Christ. Um, of those, 3,200 would never be allowed to leave the country ever again. Um, and then a large number of the rest, they're considering, like, you have to show good behavior, show that you are complying with your reporting conditions to be allowed to leave again in several years. Like, it'd be like... Well, okay, so at least they have a process for people who are accidentally put on the sexual... Pre uh, sexual um, they all, they're also going to be developing list. things like for that, who, too. Who are unknowingly, like, underage and, and, 
and uh, sending dick pics. Well, and, and they, they already addressed that as well. They're like, they're going to be looking at ways to, like, because, for instance, you know, like, you're a 16-year-old and you're sexting your, you know, your, your 16-year-old girlfriend or whatever. There are dudes that get put on the sex offender list for that. Because in America, even too. Oh yeah, all the time. It it happens way too often, and it's very mm -hmm. sad because teenagers are stupid, and you're punishing them I for. What? I don't know if that's something that gets expunged when you. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, no, I think that stays it, with you. For it life. does, and so like, they're going to be looking at ways to remove those people from the list, as well as preventing new ones from being added for it for those type of situations. Because in those type of situations, that's just, like, ruining this person's life for what a ton of teenagers do all the time because you're confused, young, stupid, and have a lot of raging hormones all over the place. Mm -hmm. You just want to do literally anything you could. Yeah. So with that, though, we'll see what happens for it. This is not being discussed. That uh, It is being discussed by um, the, the minister, the foreign minister, but it's not actually started to go towards their, le their legislation yet. So we don't have the language of how it'll work or anything like that. Just this is what they are intending on doing. So, I mean, at least they're putting it forward. Yeah. I, I like this. I like this a lot. Um, this is something that I, I approve of. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try and say that I enjoy this in multiple different ways until you say something. Um, I <laughs> think that this is great. I think that this is a step forward in mankind. Uh, this is phantasmagoric. Uh, fuck. God, Michael, please say something. Why? Uh, What's wrong? Are your headphones I'm... busted? No, just say something because <laughs> I can't think of any other way to say good because I've been drinking. <laughs> good. <laughs> good for you, sir. All right. So how about this, Nathan? I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Nathan, what did you care about in the last 24 hours? Uh, 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 honestly, pretty much nothing. Yeah? Yeah, like, I haven't been able to read any news articles because I've been at the front today, uh, so I was working with people, so... A shame. I didn't, I didn't really learn much. Um, well, I mean, I, I guess I learned a bit, but not really. I, like, I, I, I'm not ready for the front, but it was all stuff that I've encountered, so it's not like... I, it was more repetition than anything. I am so amazed. Um, like, this is this, nothing against you. This is in no way against you. Because I know that you are a very able-bodied individual. You are good at your work. But damn, are they training you slow. Dude, all right. Didn't That's you get because, that job in October? Yes, but we need, like, three other people to be working there. But we only have the budget to add one more person. Okay, I, I, I really understand that. Yeah, we have no budget. Yeah, um, no, I'm working... I, I really understand. Trust me. I work for the state, too. We're supposed to have 13 employees. We have five. So, mm -hmm. like, I understand. But... Kirsten asked uh, where I'm working now. I'm working at the Nesbitt Courthouse in the customer service area. Um, hopefully, I'm moving up sometime soon now that I've had my uh, my eval and I feel comfortable with uh, working in another division. I'm probably going to do some cross-training in domestic violence, maybe uh, try and work my way to civil or records. Um so I'm, I'm, I'm like, like after after working today, like I I've, I was dealing with people all day. I haven't been able to read any news articles. I haven't been able to to update myself on a lot of things. Um, so really, I guess today's thing of the day is that I'm drinking again because I have a lot of gin and I'm gonna be drinking a lot every podcast until you're out and then you'll be sad. until I'm out and then I might buy some more depending on how broke I am. My sister earlier asked if she saw the blanket that she made me um, in the background of on, on my hammock, and no, actually, I keep that by my um, by my bathroom so that in the morning I can take this blanket and curl up on the bathroom floor and sleep for an extra fifteen minutes before I'm ready to take a shower. I don't know if that's depressing or adorable. No, I mean, what I do is I get up, I throw my clothes in the dryer so that they're warm, I sleep on the bathroom floor for 15 minutes, and then I shower, and then I, I, like, for 10 minutes, and then I get out, put on some warm clothes, and then I sleep for another 20 minutes. Um, you should go to bed earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you actually serious, says Reza in the chat room? Yeah, yeah, he's serious. He's not just messing with you. No, dude, no, this is a long stem thing. Like, and I've slept on my bathroom floor for 15 minutes every day since I had recently gotten out of high school. 
So everyone in the chat room, you just need to convince Nathan to move in with me. One, he'll save a lot of money because his current roommates suck. Except for you, Draven. I like you, Draven. <laughs> Mom, I'd totally bring Jin to your house if it <laughs> lasts long enough. Um, and then he won't have this problem anymore. So I'm, I'm bullshit. Even if I was living there, I'd totally like have awful hours of sleep. Then wake up still. Sh may what? I, what would change is I wouldn't be having warm clothes in the morning. Why not? The dryer's right there. Right, but I wouldn't. I feel like I wouldn't want to turn it on in the morning because you guys are, you know, you guys are great, and I don't want to make that kind of noise in the morning. We'd be awake. Whoa! There's a great white jumped in a boat of a 73 year old man. That's fucking sick. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thing I cared about in the last 24 hours, I cared about in like the last hour and a half, and that is our new live time that we started going onto the show we go live Dude, on facebook great i have so much more time to drink <laughs> see and i have time to like enjoy my evening um, by drinking we go live at 6 p.m alaska time which is 7 p.m if you are on the west coast so areas like you know seattle portland cal anywhere in california mountain time it is going to be eight central time it's nine if you're on the east coast it's ten um this is about the best we can do with our schedules, but we I, I, we saw a decent influx of people in the chat room today. We got up to 10 people all at the same time, which is, I think, the best we've ever done. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be our new time. I also want to recommend people, if you can't make the live show, I understand. The, if you want to see the video, the video goes up on YouTube. You can also just see it in the Facebook feed. It might be easier to find on YouTube. We do have it. Just search I read it on YouTube. It'll show up there. Otherwise, if you don't want the video or don't need the video, you can listen to us just take us in your phone um if you have the podcast app on itunes or if you have google play or stitcher you can find us on basically any podcatcher podcast addict that's what i use yeah th just look it up we're there otherwise it's great. yeah i'm i'm excited because it is only 652 my time i will be done and probably have the show posted by around like seven which is awesome because that means i have like four hours before i go to sleep which means that i can i'm gonna go work out on my new exercise bike that i just bought at the salvage and army for 25 bucks because hell yeah and i'm gonna eat dinner and then i'm gonna just hell off time to like watch a movie or some shit if i want to yeah that sounds like a sick night right and that'll start being every night i'm kind of jealous i'm probably just gonna drink some more and then go longboarding drunk well nathan if you moved in with us you would also have dinner and shit too well i mean i i'm gonna get dinner because i can't be this drunk without eating something and so i'm probably gonna eat something but then i'm gonna get even more drunk and i'm gonna go longboarding because longboarding drunk is really fun uh, however however i have ptsd from longboarding so don't do it well, I mean, I'm going to do it anyways, because then you get over my PTSD. And, I broke my wrist. I know. Uh, I'm going down. No, I, well, I know you fucking know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm showing everybody literally else in the fucking chat. <laughs> and I'm talking about it for the people who are listening. I broke my, I broke my wrist, all right, when I was longboarding. So um, what happened was I was uh, going down this path, and it was really narrow, and someone was going up it, so I moved to avoid them, and my, one of my wheels popped off the side of the path, and it, like, fishtailed, and I, like, crushed a snail as I flew backwards and slammed my head into the ground. I actually still have a rock in my head from it. Um, but I had to get surgery to put uh, to put a screw in my bone to put it back together. And um, I remember them injecting my arm with something to, to numb the entire arm. It was in, like, my armpit. And I was like... They were like, hey, so is it working? And I was like, hey, uh, not really. Could you, like, could you add more? So they, like, injected my finger, and I was completely fucked up at that point. And so we're, we, we're being wheeled into the OR, and I was like, hey, can we listen to music? And they were like, yeah, sure, what do you want? And I was like, can we listen to Queen? And they were like, uh, yeah, we have, I mean, we have Queen on Pandora. And I'm like, yeah, and they put it on. And I remember singing part of of a queen song but apparently i sang three Good and job. then passed out but can you imagine me just lying on a table 200 degrees this is why they call me mr ferret hi so a lot Traveling like what you are right now just blood. at a table yeah pretty much yeah exactly mm -hmm. oh tiger just joined but he's too late we're ending the show <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you just flip you off the camera? know the show's ended because it's empty. <laughs> well, almost empty. You're gonna get some weird slurping sounds. 
You're the worst. All right, everybody. We're going to get out of here. Uh, you can also follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All of those are at iReadicast. I'm at Schwan Michael. Nathan's at Bim and Stein. Um, yeah, follow us. If you're able to make the live show, awesome. We'd love to see you guys. And otherwise, uh, Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. Alaska time, or just on your friggin' podcast device. Yeah. All right, everybody. That is your 296th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwan. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everybody. Don't get eliminated! <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Bye.